Okay, so uh, this is just a little virtual uh, checkout, as it were, of uh, Sound Devices PIX240. Um, primarily, I'm going to deal with if you're going to record a video signal out of a camera, uh, because for whatever reason you prefer the codec that this thing generates and the bitrate this generates over the camera itself. Um, but before we get into that, let me just show you the different other things on the inputs and outputs on this. There's a 12 volt in through here. Well, right now we're connected to AC power supply. There's an audio line out. There's two XLR inputs. Uh, there's a time code in and out over here. There's a sync out for Genlock. There's a, a HDSDI or SDI in here and SDI out over there. Uh, over here there's a HDMI in and HDMI out. Uh, as I understand it, all of these are active, so if you feed something into the SDI, you can also pump out HDMI as well as an SDI signal, uh, and vice versa. Uh, the 5-pin Limo, LAN connector, keyboard, uh, which I'll get into later what that might be useful for. There's a roller switch here. You can spin things and push in for navigating using the menu, which is the menu button right there. On the top is a CF slot. And then on the side here is uh, what they call a PIX caddy. This thing sticking out. You grab this, pull this out, and uh, it's a solid state drive. In this case, it's a 256 gig solid state drive. It inter interfaces with the PIX using the eSATA P connection, which is a powered eSATA connection. You can also just take this and connect it to your computer via the FireWire 800 connection or a USB 3. Uh, so you could just take this over to the download station and connect this to the computer and pull your stuff off. So we'll slide it back in, mount this back up. Uh, also on the back, Sony L-series batteries, you can put two of them, one there and one there. Uh, it only needs one to run. If you put two on, they run in parallel, meaning they drain simultaneously. Or you can put one on and then when it gets weak, put the new one on the other side and pull this one off. Uh, a typical one about this big will run the picks for about two and a half, maybe three hours, depending on your settings. Uh, the other thing that's nice is when you have it connected to AC power like I do now, it will charge the batteries on the back. So right now it's indicating that the one battery I do have connected, this thing is glowing green, solid green, which means that battery is fully charged. Now to turn it on, you press the menu and push in the roller wheel to power it up. It takes a moment to power up. Now, as it does, I believe this indicator light will come on. Uh, first, you get this flash screen, the sound devices. Yep, see now, anytime that lights up, it means it's accessing the drive. That's the only time you should not pull this drive in or out. See there, it's accessing it. When it's, when it's not lit, there's no menu you have to go through. You can just literally just unclip it, even while it's powered up, as long as that light is not illuminated. All right, now of course in the front you have the uh, transport buttons for recording, playback, fast forward, whatnot. You also have these other buttons for navigating the menu and, and files and whatnot. Uh, before we get into all of that, let me just talk about, is in this case we're feeding a single SDI signal into the box. And uh, I'm just gonna assume that's what we're trying to record. So there's six things you have to take into, uh, account when you're going to do that. Very first thing, press menu, go all the way down to system, go all the way down to info, and just make sure you're running the most current firmware. You can go to the website of sounddevices.com, confirm you have the same firmware as what's, uh, as what's most current. If not, they can tell you how to update the firmware. In this case, uh, as of this video, this is the most current firmware. So I just hit okay. Uh, now, so that was one thing, we'll get back out. So there's, the other things are, you're gonna to wanna to be able to tell it uh, what video signal you want, where you want the audio to come from, uh, what kind of codec you want to uh, record it to, uh, how you want it to start and stop, uh, the SDI flag, uh, and uh, your file naming conventions. So. Right now we're connected via SDI, but we don't see anything. So let's go to menu, video, video input. We'll choose, instead of HDMI, we'll choose SDI. 
All right, now I get out of this menu and there, we have a picture coming from the camera. So the other thing while we're there in that video menu, file resolution and rate, we can choose whether it's a 1080, 2398 coming in. Uh, we could choose to up or down convert if we so uh, wanted, but in this case, most of the time you're gonna to wanna to choose same as video input. And it says make sure to rejam. In this case, we're not using the time code clock in here. Uh, <clears throat> so we don't need to jam. Choosing the codec, ProRes 422. Again, you have lots of choices. You can pick, uh, pick DNX HD or ProRes in a bunch of different flavors. I'm just gonna pick ProRes 422. Input PSF detect, this is an auto right now, but if you're feeding an HDMI signal uh, with 24 frame embedded in a 5997 signal, you might have to choose this to make it stick. But again, the default is auto. And you'll see on the splash screen, uh, We'll, we'll look at once we get this all done. You can confirm everything is as you expected. So now we've, we've fixed video. We now have a video signal. Uh, and uh, now we've got to worry about audio. So let's go all the way down to audio. And here, uh, analog input. It might be, I believe the default is analog XLR. Uh, but uh, in this case, we want to choose SDI HDMI two channels. So you choose that. So now we've made sure that the audio is coming from uh, the SDI stream as well as the video. Now let's make sure the time code is working the way we want. Time code mode is currently off. You could do free run, 24 hour run, record run. Uh, these are all generating its own time code. Here we want to do external time code, but we're not going to use, uh, uh, we're going to use the uh, SDI stream external time code. So again, audio, video, and time code is all being pulled in through this cable here. So external time code, choose that. Uh, and then if we look at this page, we should see the SDI in is 1080-23976. It's planning to record 1080-23976. All good there, 422 ProRes. That's the date. That's the time code it's getting from the camera currently on a 23976 time base. Uh, over here, that's the voltage coming in off of this. And then battery one, It's there's nothing there, so it's zero. Here it's 8.2 for that one. It's hot swappable. I can unplug this. It'll just hand off to the other battery, no problem get that back on and then um, HDMI SDI two channels CF card is offline and current settings the SSD will give us two hours and 42 minutes record time and this tells us the essentially transport mechanism what's going on and then across the top here is your audio level meters now the camera is not feeding any audio so we don't see any display here but uh, if we did send audio from the camera, it would display here. And these are quite good meters, obviously. This is designed by a sound, uh, a company that makes sound equipment, so these meters are excellent. Uh, however, also being designed by a sound company, uh, there are some things that are a little slightly user-unfriendly to uh, video camera people. Uh, this button here, the LCD, I can toggle, turn off the display. I turn off the display and I still see time code or crosshairs. It's being generated by the camera, not the pics. That's a problem on your camera that you need to fix because the pics will just, pics doesn't care, it records it. But then if you're planning to use this as your master recorder, you'd have that stuff burned in. But here we see it's clean. Now that camera I'm connected to right now is a, a red camera. It's sending a signal that is not natively 16 by nine. So there's a letter box on the top and bottom. So it's, it's cropped a little bit. Uh, but nevertheless, even, even with that cropped headroom, there's, there's the top of frame line. If I turn this back on, these meters obscure your frame. So you can't simultaneously look at all the engineering display and use this monitor for framing because these meters obscure. They're right there, the top of frame, right in the middle. So, and these are totally opaque. They, it hides everything underneath them. So, 
to my mind, currently that's a, a flaw because you cannot move them around. You can turn on or off individual elements of this display. So I could turn this display off, that part of it. Uh, but uh, I like seeing the audio level because that's certainly half of the recording. You want good audio and good picture. All right, so now we have time code coming from the camera, audio coming from the camera, video coming from the camera. Now we only have two more things we need to worry about. Uh, one is I want the camera every time the camera starts and stops, I want the pics to start and stop automatically. You go to menu, go to system, and then SDI flag. Again, we're connected to a red camera, so I'm going to choose SDI flag red. That means every time I hit record on the camera, this is going to automatically record. Every time I hit stop on the camera, this is automatically going to stop. Uh, and then the last thing is file storage. Uh, the file naming format you want the pics to adopt. You have a bunch of different choices, real, scene, take, number. Now some of these are quite handy, but to keep changing the scene and take number, now the take number will advance automatically, but if you want to if it's a new scene, you have to manually enter it. Uh, this is not a touch screen, so you'll have to do it navigating with this thing. Sometimes it can be kind of difficult. There is a keyboard, USB keyboard slot, so you can slide a keyboard in, and that would make entering scene and take numbers quite uh, a, a lot easier. However, I'm imagining at least half the time this thing is going to be riding on a camera, so having a keyboard attached just to change the scene and take numbers is quite annoying. Uh, you can just have reel and clip. There's all sorts of choices. Um, since we're connected to a red camera, we're going to choose red file format. The nice thing about that is it's going to pull, it's going to assign the scene name format is going to be pulled from the SDI. So it's actually the clips are going to exactly match the clips that the camera is generating. Another sort of little sneaky thing on some of these quick button combinations. If you press and hold the stop button, it'll tell you what the next clip is going to be. So that's what, if we started recording, what the next clip would be. Uh, little shortcuts for some of these buttons. You press this and it'll give you, show you all possibly up to eight channels that you're recording. In this case, we're only recording two. Turn that off. If you press and hold this and then use the, press in this. See here, head, headphones. It's what channels you're listening to. One, two, three, five, and seven in the left ear. Two, four, six, and eight on the right. Uh, the other thing you can do, let's take it back to there. You can also, while holding down on the audio button, if you turn this knob, it adjusts your headphone volume. And again, the headphone is, jack is right there. Okay. Uh, LCD, you have three functions. You can, or two really. You can turn on or off the overlay. Or if you press and hold it, it turns off the whole screen. The pics will still work normally. It's just the screen that's off. It'll still record or stop. Uh, but it does save some power. All right. Uh, menu, that's how you navigate, as you've seen. Files, you press that, and it gets into your whole list of previously recorded stuff. You find something. Now, this does not show thumbnails. Uh, I'm sure that'll come in a future build. But currently, there, uh, you only see scene names and size and real. You can hit play. So that's something uh, uh, I shot previously. You can push you can push in this and use this as a scrub wheel to scrub forward or back. You can fast forward or rewind using these buttons. Hitting play and then hitting pause causes it to pause again. So and it'll report what the, the quality of what uh, got recorded. So this one is 1080 PSF 23976. Currently we're still getting 20, 1080 23976 P because that's what's connected to the camera currently. Anyway, eject out of that. Uh, the other uh, sort of buried feature is you can press menu and files and choose to lock non-transport buttons, which would be these four buttons or lock all buttons, which would include these guys. The one thing that's kind of interesting I found, if you hit lock all buttons, the record button is still enabled. Uh, if I hit record, it will start recording. Uh, I'm not sure. In typical uh, 
uh, the way technology advances these days. I'm not sure if that's a firmware, I mean, if that's a feature or a bug, uh, but there you go. I can't hit stop, however, because the buttons are locked. So I have to go into this and then roll back to unlock buttons. And uh, I should be able to hit stop now. Now it's set up to, uh, this should be the time code from the camera. Uh, the next clip, it's still the same because the camera itself hasn't rolled. It was just reading what the a flag would be called. So uh, input and the audio is there. So if I go and roll the camera, this thing should roll. All right. So automatically rolled the pics and uh, there's your time code. That's indicating it's rolling. Uh, it's writing, everything makes sense. And then I can, when I cut the camera, it cuts the pics, which is quite nice. So you can kind of set it and forget it. Uh, I wish if you locked all these keys that there was a menu choice to be able to disable the record button. These are nice buttons, but they do stick out a little bit. You could imagine if it's completely unattended, somebody could accidentally bump it if it's attached to the side of the camera or something. Uh, and that's about it. I mean, there's a lot more features in terms of jamming cameras via timecode and Genlock. Uh, I'm not going to get into that uh, here this time, but um, that's sort of the simple, basic, uh, what I imagine this will be used for most of the time. Um, that's it.